Welcome to our review on indicators of pollution. So first thing we're going to consider is acid rain. Now we know that the combustion of fossil fuels releases sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide and the nitrogen oxides into our atmosphere. Those gases will all dissolve in the rain and then they will generate acid rain as a result. When that acid rain falls, what we could see is that trees could die, as we can see in the bottom right picture there. We can see a erosion of our limestone and also the death of fish when the lakes become acidified, as you can see in the bottom left picture. Second problem is global warming. Now, when we burn fossil fuels, we release those greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. Those greenhouse gases then allow the sun's radiation in but it prevents heat being radiated away from the Earth back into space. So as a result of that, we see Earth's mean surface temperature increasing, and that obviously can have some very damaging effects. If we consider what's going to happen to an environment that is suffering from pollution, generally what we will see is that in more polluted areas, we have fewer species which can survive there. Now what we can actually do is by looking to see what species are present and what species are absent, we get an idea of what the level of pollution actually is. And the species that we use for this are called indicator species. If we consider indicator species in water, first of all, one of the key ones that we can use is this delightful little creature called a rat-tailed maggot. Now you can see a picture of him at the bottom there. And our rat-tailed maggots are able to survive in very low oxygen waters. And the reason they can do that is, you may think it's just a random tail at the bottom there, but in fact, their tail is like a snorkel. So they can actually use that to breathe oxygen from above the polluted water. So obviously that means they can survive in low oxygen waters there because they've got their own personal little snorkel in the form of their tail that allows them to get oxygen. Two others that will indicate polluted water are if we find sludge worms and water lice present. If, however, we go to water and find that there's lots of mayfly larva, then they will only be found in clean water. So it's not just the species that we find in polluted water. There are some that we will only find when the water is not polluted. If we consider air indicator species next, then what we're going to be thinking about are lichens. Now, lichens are a very good indicator for air pollution because what we find is some of them will grow where there's high pollution, some grow where there's moderate pollution, and others will only grow where the air is unpolluted and clean. So what we can see in those pictures on the right then, if we start at the bottom, in the one labelled C, that one will only grow in unpolluted air. B is where we're going to have moderate levels of air pollution, and A at the very top there, that yellow one, is where the pollution levels are high. Now that yellow one loves high nitrogen content, which is why if you're at my school then, if you look at the roof of either of the gyms, then you will notice that there is probably quite a significant amount of that yellow lichen present. Because where all the seagulls like to line up and wait for you to drop your food at break and lunch, then there's obviously a lot of bird droppings there, and they're very rich in nitrogen. So we get that lovely yellow lichen growing because it's nitrogen rich. The reason that lichens are such good indicators is because they live in the environment for a long time. However, there is one downside to using lichens, and that's that they're not always present where we actually want to test the air quality.